your pocket. One eight hundred. In the lost squad. <laughs> This is Hard Copy for Wednesday, September 16th, 1992. Hello and welcome. I'm Barry Nolan. And I'm Terry Murphy. Good evening. The case unnerved parents in every town in America that an attractive high school teacher like Pamela Smart could seduce not one, but three of her teenage students to commit murder. The victim was her husband. Tonight, the Pamela Smart case grew even more bizarre and frightening. Our Ames Yates is at the scene. Terry, it was a strange cult-like scene here at the courthouse. Dozens of Pam Smart fans, all of them talking about this killer like she's a victim. No more like she's some kind of guru. And then, in the middle of it all, a truly shocking charge from Pam's mother-in-law. I was told that my life was being threatened by Pam's lover, which was leaving jail on that day. They brought a picture to us, so I'd know what she looked like. And I guess it was discussed in prison with her and Pam that they were going to get vengeance on me. I don't know why, maybe because I was Greg's mother, but it makes no sense. But I just faced her in the ladies' room. What did she say to you? The girl that threatened my life. What did she say? She, I walked in and she just gave me a, uh, you know, sarcastic grin. She's Judith Smart, the mother of Pam Smart's murdered husband. Pam used to call her mom. Now, Judith Smart says she's worried about becoming a victim herself, a victim of Pam Smart's female jailhouse lover, just one of the many lovers of Pam Smart. I love you, Pam. We're here for you. This court hearing was supposed to reveal the grounds for a possible new trial, but it also blew the lid off of the weirdest killer cult since the Manson Girls, a network stretching from the thickets of New Hampshire to the sands of Florida. Pam Smart's fan club. People who read her newsletter. People who send her everything from poetry to flowers to lacy underthings. We got beautiful bouquets of flowers yesterday and one of them simply said to freedom. They even write songs about her. Pamela's on trial. There's too much in the news. Who'd believe it? Just a year ago, Pamela Smart was sent away to prison for life. Maybe it was the televised trial that sparked the attraction. Three of Pam's high school students testified she'd convinced them to kill her husband, Greg, including the trigger man, her 15-year-old lover. I said, um, God, forgive me. As she said, God, forgive me, what happened? I pulled the trigger. When Pamela Smart was put away, she became America's most notorious female prison inmate. She also became the legal system's most popular pen pal. We feel she needs to have a fair trial. You know, that's all we're asking. Give her another chance. Lori Ugatika lives far away in Orlando, Florida. She's been writing to Pam Smart for months. She even says she hopes to meet her face to face. She's very kind and she's very loving. You know, she does not hold any hate or remorse in her for people surrounding this incident. She holds hate and remorse for the fact that the judicial system failed. It failed her. Lori even squeezed into a bikini for this picture of herself. She says she did it to lift Pam's spirits. The beach is still there, Pam, and it's waiting for you. Closer to Pam's prison home is this guy. Bob Dorley is right in her backyard in New Hampshire. He took an old song and turned it into a protest tune. Now is she innocent or do we play the fool? Oh, I wonder where the wind and rain. And yesterday, outside New Hampshire's Supreme Court, dozens of those Pam Smart supporters waited in 90 degree heat. Any idea how many supporters there are? Thousands. They're all over the country, Singapore, all over Australia. She gets letters by a hundred a day. She, she is constantly writing back to these people, which is, I think, why she maintains these supporters. She has the time and the decency to maintain a friendship and a rapport with them that most people wouldn't do. It's almost, uh, for lack of a better term, it almost sounds like a prison messiah, if you will. I call it what you will, but it works. State of New Hampshire, Pamela Smart. 
Inside, Pam's lawyer said the former school teacher didn't get a fair trial. He says the jury was prejudiced by all the media coverage. The prosecutor, though, he said the evidence against Pam Smart was overwhelming. When it was over, all the Pam Smart fans traded hugs, handshakes, and wet kisses. Pam Smart's mother thanked all the people around the country rooting for her daughter, the convicted murderess. Thank you for everyone who has come to us and who has said, total strangers from all over the world even, not just this country, that we too care about justice. But remember, Greg Smart's parents came to court too. They stayed off to the side, by themselves, until Mrs. Smart says she faced down Pamela's girlfriend from prison. The Smarts will never see their son again. They certainly don't want freedom for the woman who had him killed. I absolutely pray to God that I can go on with my life and that my family can heal. Ames, when will we know if she'll get a new trial? We should know in a couple of weeks, Terry. And if the judges say no, there's no telling what to expect from the Pam Smart cult. Thanks, Ames. We'll keep you updated on that case. For a family sedan, this Ford tour be a part of the legend. Seventy percent of the surface. You gave us a try. Now hit subscribe. Be sure to YouTube responsibly and hit that like button if you like what you see, because there's plenty of content to come.